Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, we are going to continue work on the snake playmaker and we are going to create the fruit mechanics where we can eat the fruit and then we can randomize the fruit position and also grow the snake body whenever the snake eats the fruit. And we want to also make sure that the fruit won't spawn inside the one of the body position. So we need to randomize the position and we need to also check that random position against the position of the body parts of the snake. So let's jump into it. But before we jump into the tutorials, if you want to learn how to create a game from scratch to a complete game, check out my online Unity courses. I've published a couple of courses covering best practices in game development with topics ranging from programming to visual tuning, desktop to a mobile platform, object-oriented programming, and many other useful tips. With the price of a takeaway, you'll get lifetime access to the course. Link in the description below. Now let's continue the Snake Playmaker project. And in this video, we are going to create how to grow the snake body whenever the snake consume the fruit. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new empty game object and put this above here. And I'm going to reset its transform so it's centered. And let's just call this Fruit Manager. And then I'm going to add the fruit prefabs here and make this as a child of the fruit manager. And the fruit prefab is basically the same as the body part, but with a green color. So I'm going to put this around this position here. And now let's create the FSM for the fruit manager. I'm going to add a new FSM. And for the FSM, I'm going to call this also fruit manager. And I'm going to create a new state here. And for the second state, I'm going to call this randomize position. And I'm going to add a global event called reposition. And make sure this global event checkbox is checked. And I'm going to add this event here as a global transition. And in the state, we are going to set a couple of random integer action. So let's just add the first one. And let's set this to negative 1 and also to 1 for the maximum. And we want to set the inclusive max to on. Basically, this will include the maximum number as the random value. And we want to save this to a new variable. And I'm going to call this x direction. And this will define the x directions of the new fruit position whenever the snake eats the fruit. And then I'm going to copy this action here and save this to a new variable which is the y direction and minimize this random integer and then i'm going to add another random integer and i'm going to create a new integer variables for defining the half width of our scene and then the half height of the scene here so let's just create a new integer variable and this will be the half width and the other one will be the half height so for the half width, I'm going to set its value to 8. And for the half height, I'm going to set its value to 4. We don't want the fruit to be very near on the edge here. So I'm going to reduce the size by one grid here. So it's four grid. And here inside the state, I'm going to set the minimum to zero and the maximum to the half width and save the value to a new integer variable called random width. And we can include the maximum here. And I'm going to copy this action. And for the maximum, for the second action, I'm going to set its maximum to the half height and store the result to a new variable called random height. And this will create a random y and x position for the fruit whenever the fruit gets eaten by the snake. And now we have this four random action. The next action that we want to add is a set vector. 3xyz. So we want to create a new vector position and we can save this to a new variable. Let's just call this next position and set the x value to the. Oh, sorry. We need to add an integer operator. So I'm going to add that. Let's just add an integer operator and put this on top of the set vector 3xyz. Here, we want to multiply the x direction and the y direction with the random width and the random height variable. So for the first integer, I'm going to set this to the random width. 
and then I'm going to multiply the random width with the x direction and set the operation to multiply and we can save the value to the x direction because we are going to generate x direction whenever we run the state here so it's okay we overwrite this and let's just copy the integer operator and for the second action set this to random height and for the integer the second integer we can set this to the y direction and save this to the y direction here okay so now we have the x and y com component for making the next position factor here so for the x value let's just pick the x direction and for the y value we can just pick the y direction here and now we want to set the fruit position so let's just run the set position action and we can just pick the fruit here we need to create a new game object variable to hold the fruit object so let's just call this fruit and for the value we can just drag this prefabs child here and then we can just move that fruit that we've just created and assign this to the next position here and we can set the space to roll and we can add a finish transition and connect this to the state here and here inside the first state we want to get the position of the fruit and then save this position back to the next position and we want to send this position to the snake logic so inside the snake logic we need to create a new variable under the snake movement fsm we need to create a new variable called fruit position i've already created this so we can just use this but if you haven't just create a new factor 3 variable called fruit position and back to the fruit manager on the first state we can just set an fsm vector 3 variable and this will set a vector 3 variable on another fsm so i'm going to specify game object and then drag the snake logic game object and for the fsm name we can just pick the snake movement and then pick the fruit position variable and set its value to the next position here okay so now we have this randomized fruit working we can go to the snake logic and now we can work on the snake movement here so in order to check whenever the snake eats the fruit we can just compare the head position with the fruit position and we already send the fruit position to this fruit position variable from the fruit manager so we can just compare these this head position variable with the fruit position variable that we've received from the fruit manager okay so here below i'm going to use the vector 3 operator and we want to compare the distance from the head position to the fruit position and then we want to pick the distance operation and we want to save the distance to a new float variable and we already have this vector distance we can just use this and basically we want to compare the float if the vector distance is very small if we can just test this if it's equal to zero then we can just send to the eat fruit state here but since this is a float it's quite tricky if we compare to an exact value so in order to prevent a precision issue we can just add a tolerance to a very small value so i'm going to set this to 0 0.01 and i'm going to create a new event so we can go from the move head to the eat fruit state here so let's just create a new event and let's just call this eat fruit and here we can add the eat fruit transition and then connect this to the eat fruit state and basically if it's equal then we want to go to the eat fruit state so we can just pick the eat fruit transition here and inside the eat fruit state we want to add a finish transition and then send the finish transition back to this loop body parts and inside the eat fruit we want to pick the position of the last member of the body part and then instantiate a new parts and then set its position and also add that new parts into the body parts array so let's just create an integer operator and here i'm going to pick the length integer and subtract it by one so i'm going to set the second integer to one and pick the subtract operation and store the result to a new variable 
So I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this last member. Now we have the last member index. I'm going to use the array get action and I'm going to pick the last body part from the body part array. So we can just pick the body parts array and for the index, we can use the last member integer and we want to store the value to the current spawn. And now we want to get the position of the last body part. So let's just use the specify game object and then pick the current spawn variable. And to get its position, we want to create a new factor three variable. So I'm going to create a new variable called spawn position. And then uh, we want to add the create object action. And for the game object that we want to create is the body part. So we can just search for the part on the assets here and this is the object that we want to create and for the position let's just pick the spawn position and we need to store this game object into a variable so we can just override this current spawn because we won't be using it anymore in this state and we need to add an array add and let's just add the current spawn to the body part the newest body member that we've just spawned here and we need to update the length variable so i'm going to use the array length and then pick the body parts array and save it to the length so this will grab the new length after we add a new body part and here we want to send an event and we need to pick game object fsm and specify game object and then we can just drag the fruit manager and here we can just access the fruit manager FSM and we want to send the reposition. So whenever we eat the fruit, then the fruit will move to a new random position. And let's save the scene here. And now let's give it a try. So now we have 10 body parts, as you can see in the hierarchy, and I'm going to highlight the last body part here. And let's just try to eat the fruit. And there you go. As you can see, we have a new body part created below the last selection. And if I eat another one, you see this will grow our body part. There is one issue though. Here, we might spawn the fruit into the one of the position of the body part because we don't have any mechanics to check for that uh, position. So in order to prevent this, we can create a mechanics. Here inside the variables, we need to create a new array uh, variables for the snake movement. So I'm going to create a new array and let's just call this body position. And basically we want to record every position of the all of the body parts here and send those position into the fruit manager. And here, uh, inside the initialized length, I want to resize the body position array because by default it will be set to zero. So we can just use the array resize. And then uh, we can pick the body position array. And for the, sorry, not with the body parts, but it should be the body position. I'm going to delete this and let's add a new action because I cannot change it anymore. Okay, pick body position here and we want to set the new size to the length. So basically when we grab a new length from the body parts, we want to set the body position length to be the same as the body parts here. And here inside the move head, we want to record the position. So here we can just use the array set action and move this above the factor three operator just down below the get position and we can pick the body position here and for the index we can just grab the current index which is the loop variable because we are storing the current index to the loop variable here on the array get next and for the value we can just grab the head position sorry the body oh sorry uh we need to set the body position here and it sets to float, so I'm going to change this to vector three. And back to the state here, I'm going to grab the head position here. And I'm going to copy this array set action and paste it here in the move body action. 
So let's just paste it here. And then uh, I'm going to grab the next position here, the latest position of each of the body part. So let's just change this to the next position. And then here, whenever we finish looping the, the body parts here, inside the initialized length, we want to send the body parts position to an array variable with the same type on the fruit manager. So in order to do that, uh, we can go to the fruit manager under the variables. Let's create a new array variable. And let's just call this body position. And for the array type, I'm going to change this to vector three. And now if we go back to the snake logic here, we can just use the set FSM vector, uh, sorry, not vector three, but the set FSM array and put this above the weight action. And for the game object target, we can just pick the fruit manager here and then pick the fruit manager FSM for the variable name. It should be the same, which is body position. And then we want to set this value to the latest body position array here. And just enable the copy values here and save this here. Okay, so now we have saved the scene back to the fruit manager. We can just compare the next position if the array body positions array one of the member of the body position have the same position with the next position here then we want to rerun all of this random action here so i'm going to add an array contains action here and move this above the set position and then i'm going to look through the body positions and check if this body positions member at least one of the member have the same position with the next position then we want to loop this state here so i'm going to add a new event and let's just call this uh randomize and we can add this randomize transition here and then loop this back to this randomized position state here and basically we want to set if is contained event or if the body position have the same position with the next position then we want to to run the this state back so we can just pick the randomized transition here and then it will rerun all of this action above here okay let's save this and we can give it a try again and now this will prevent the fruit to spawn inside of the body parts of the snake so it will pick a new position that is not occupied by the snack body positions. Okay, so this concludes the snake tutorial. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave in the comments below and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. And if you like, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. And also click on that notification button to subscribe for more Unity tutorial, whether it's C-Sharp, Playmaker, or Bold. And thanks a lot for watching.